as my mom. <laughs> then it's just so many memories. So we've done this episode a few times before, but recently you provided us with some throwback pictures of yourself when you were younger. Oh, God. Yes, I did. I gave pictures of my family going all the way back into the late 1800s, early 1900s. Today, we're gonna have you go through some of them, but uh -huh. they may look a little different than when you sent these pictures in. Okay. So here is your first picture. Oh, that's that's my mom and dad's wedding picture. And there, that's them on the bottom. He was drafted and had to go to Korea, and they, so they got married. Here is the same pic, but you'll see it has now been altered. Oh, that's so cool. And her dress was blue too. I still have it. It's funny because it's like, it's not that different, but they look so different. It looks more modern, I guess. That's me as a two-year-old. Oh, what a tan. That kid got some fat cheeks, doesn't he? It looks terrific. And in, the, in those days, they did have color photographs, but they were not as reliable and they kind of washed out and more expensive probably. You know, like everybody else, we were trying to, during World War II, you couldn't buy a lots of things that you could today. Oh boy. <laughs> That's the kid. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's a big difference. Color really brings it to life. Oh God. It's the war. This okay, is so probably 1944. <gasps> Look at that. my father's eyes. And my mother is beautiful. And that's my sister Susan, who just passed away. The Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. My father was in Chicago at Michael Reese Hospital. My father comes home, tells my mother, now they're Canadian still, tells I'm going down to the Army, and my father's a doctor, physician. I'm going down tomorrow morning, and I'm enlisting. So this Master Sergeant said, you'd like to be a U.S. citizen, Dr. Fine? My dad said, yes. He said, step over here, doc, and I'm gonna make you an American right now. Two weeks later, my mother was in, uh, a citizen and my father went off to the South Pacific to fight. Well, to save lives of the boys there. That's my mom. <laughs> she, I think she was only like maybe 16 or 17 there. Oh. <laughs> I was 24 when my mom died. So we didn't really get to have, like I wasn't an adult, you know, with her. So it makes me sad when I think about her. <laughs> she grew up really poor. She had to move into town when she was like, she had to drop out of school and move into town. They lived out in the country. She had to move into town to work to send money back to her family. That was when she was on her own. Oh, there's a fine looking group. Now these, this is me. The one with the round head, not the bullet head. So this is one of my fine relatives. These are my fine, fine siblings. Wow. You notice how we had our pant cuffs rolled up? You'd buy pants for kids that were two or three sizes too big so they could grow into them. They looked like about five or six, right after World War II. It was just a great place, just great memories of growing up. Oh, <laughs> that's the gang there. I remember one guy's name, the guy next to me. Uh, he's almost standing by, his name is Bebe. The rest of them, I don't remember none of their names. Wow, that's nice. Those are my classmates. Going to school and, and having fun, uh, being a kid and working on the farm, because we had a farm. I could go behind the house and climb a cherry tree, peach tree, apple tree, sit there and eat all I want, and go eat berries all day. I, I grew up very blessed. Wow, it's my grandfather, an uncle and an aunt, and this was taken in a little town in Belarus called Globata. Oh my God. Oh, wow. My grandpa, the first child he sent over at 12 years old in 1888 was my grandmother Esther. Was never safe living in Belarus. When the Second World War broke out in the small towns, about a thousand Jews most of that thousand were taken to the death camp of Treblinka. They did not survive. My whole family and that's like wiped out. If you didn't get out, the door got shut. She lived till she was 99. 
If she hadn't come, there'd be nothing. No FBE. No, I don't be anything. Oh, oh, I can't wait to see this one. Yeah, that's my mom. So that's my mom on the left, Evelyn. That's how poor they were. They didn't have shoes. This was in Minnesota. Can you imagine? Winters in Minnesota, they had, um, they didn't have indoor plumbing. They just had an outhouse. Oh, that's so cool. I see it being like dirty and black and white because that's just all I remember of seeing those old pictures, you know? But of course it wasn't, you know, it was green and there was things growing. It makes them look more real, I guess. Yeah, not just like this thing from history. And they're all, all, all gone, all past. My mom, all her brothers and sisters, and all their husbands and wives. That's a Christmas photo. There's a Christmas tree in the back. I think that's my cousin on the right. <laughs> wow. The Christmas tree came alive. In Michigan, it snows. So we would get sleds. I got a sled. It's not in the picture here. You go out and run and flop down on your sled and just guide and stuff like that. It really brings it to life. Amazing what you guys did. Oh, they're top, you notice the pants again. Everybody, check the pants. I'm 10, 11, 12 years old, and we're still buying the pants too long, so I'd go into them. Everybody had to play an instrument in my family. Everybody had to play an instrument. One of my sisters played the piano, one played the violin, I played the trombone, and my brother played the trumpet. Wow, the cabinets, the wall, the floors look good. Two things I did when I was a kid, swimming every day and trombones every day. And I played all the way through until I got to high school. When I got to high school, I went into competitive sports. I dropped the damn thing. But I later picked it up again in college. I worked my way through college in a rock and roll band. We played a little trombone, but I picked up the bass guitar. Bass guitar is easier, four strings. Phil Painter and the Knockabouts. You probably heard of us. We were big. Huh? That's her. Oh, well, look at me. That's me and my sister. I must be four or five. Ooh. That's incredible. That looks like something, a, a cell out of a movie. This was the place where I first discovered television and Howdy Doody, that the neighbors down that street, they got a television, they plug it in, and after school, all the kids would come, and they'd turn it on, this magical thing, take a while for those tubes to warm up, and it's Howdy Doody time, early 50s. It was a magical time to grow up. Oh, that's me at Christmas. Ah. <laughs> wow, it looks so different. Oh, I remember those drapes. They had like big birds on them. I think about kids today, like everything is like, oh, we'd get like a picture a year at school. We'd get one picture. And, and this, you know, we had to like, you take a picture and then you take it in and get it developed. I didn't even have like snapshot pictures. We just had slides. Okay, so here I am. Can you tell which one's me first? Okay, right in the front. That's me, yeah. That's me. Now remember, I, this is in Vietnam. I spent two years in Vietnam on a ship. And this was on a break. They get, we let us off once in a while to go into town. We might have one or two days off, and then we go back to sea for 40 or 50 days. Wow, oh, look at that. See the guy right over me there? His name is Bruce Kirk. You know, you have buddies that kind of take you, watch his back, you watch mine, we cover for each other, do that. Well, this is my buddy. There's really no way to keep in touch. There's no social media, there's no phones. And he went off on the ship and I went back and got discharged and went back to my real world. But I'll never forget the guy. So Bruce, if you're out there from Muskegon, Michigan, Bruce Kirk, let me know. Yeah, I think we took a trip and uh, we we're going to church. So I got my Sunday best on. Yeah, it was Dapper Dan right there. I think I probably had just got to camp because it was in Cassopolis, Michigan. I went to camp every year. My whole life has been a happy life. So, fun and happiness. Can I get some of these? Oh, okay. A couple of my students, and this is in Ukiah Daily Journal, which is a newspaper. Oh, look how young I am. Oh my God. That beer's rad, man. I remember that sweater. And we're inside, we had, this is the second year of the school. The first year of the school happened out of my Volkswagen bus. These kids were by and large, kids that had been thrown out of school, runaways, throwaways, living out in communes and weird places. My job was to find them and like the motto of our school was, this isn't the way out, this is the way in. I'm glad I saved all this stuff. It's nice to look back, but 
then it's just so many memories and everything changes and people pass on. And it's kind of hard to. I'm pretty damn lucky, damn lucky to see the things and live the things I've done. Now I can look back and be happy and have wonderful times, and think, but I don't want, I don't want to live like that. I want to look ahead and see the great things I'm still going to do and have and experience. I love this. This is so important. Where you come from shapes your life. As the father, I made sure I gave away everything that I wanted my kids to have, you know, other than my will. Well, they were, well, I was still alive. So we, didn't, so we could talk about what these pictures were and who's who and what and where and how. Go find the boxes with the pictures and pull them out and bring them to the dinner table. And maybe around Christmas time when the relatives or friends, you know, cousins are showing, you and get the stories. You, it'll change your life.